Hi guys, my name is Ben Guilford. I'm the owner of The Firebrick Company. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to install the precast flue gallery for your precast oven kit. Once you've allowed your arch bricks to set, uh, then you can install your precast flue gallery. Uh, so you'll find in your kit, you'll find a couple of extra long plastic strips that you can cut down and use as spaces. You could also use uh, like actual spaces, like plastic spaces if you want, because you're gonna remove them later on. Uh, so all we want basically is to create a, a gap between the top of the brick and the underside of the flue gallery. And uh, you may find that your gap needs to be a little bigger or a little smaller, uh, but basically we wanna set the gap so when we go to install the flue gallery, we know the gap that we're aiming for on the left and the right. Uh, and that will be set by these packers. Okay, so um, this is a job really to make sure you have some help to do. This thing is relatively heavy. Uh, the flue gallery is quite a heavy object and you really wanna have someone help you lift it into place because it gives you a lot more control over it. Today we have Marcus uh, who'll be assisting us. Uh, so we're gonna lift it into position. The key is be careful not to bump your brickwork. All right, we don't wanna knock this and break the mortar joints. So I'm looking at this and I can see I've got a nice, well I've got quite a big gap across the top here. Uh, and so that means I can actually drop this down a little bit. Now how I'll do that, I'll just get uh, a little stick or something, just, and I'll lever it up and I'll just drop out one of the spaces on this side. I'm actually looking and I'm gonna leave the two spaces in on this corner because the brickwork is sitting slightly higher and I want this to be as level as I can get it. Uh, so we've got our packers in position and I'm really happy with how the flue gallery is sitting. So I've got a nice uniform joint around the front and uh, we've dropped it actually down to quite a tight joint here. But remember guys, yours may be different. You may find you have to, you could even end up with say a 15 mil joint on the left and right. That's fine, it's not, not an issue. Um, all of our castings, we, we make them ourselves. Uh, we pour them in our own molds and we're very, very careful about the quality of these castings. Um, but you may find that your casting might be slightly shorter on the left and right by a few millimeters. So you might just have to have a slightly bigger joint, all part of the product. Um, speaking of the product, I do want to point out a couple of things about the flue gallery. Firstly, the flue sleeve that's coming out the top here, it actually has a front and a back. The back has a seam. Okay, now if you really want to, you can have that facing forward so you can see the seam at the front. I prefer not to see it, I like to see it at the back. So we have, our, this would be our front face here. And when we are making these, when we're putting the sleeve in, we actually do a check and we look to see which face uh, has the least, these are called bug holes. They're little bubbles in the castable uh, as it's setting. So we actually check to see which is the best face and we put the, the front of the sleeve towards that face. So guys, be, be aware, um, we, we do our level best to vibrate all of these little bug holes out, but you will get a few of them in your casting, and that's normal. Um, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be painting this later on, and so these won't be all that noticeable. If you want to, you could take some of the refractory mortar and get a fine sieve and sieve out the, the aggregate. So you end up with this fine, very fine powder. And mix that into a paste and you could work that into those holes. Uh, and then when you paint it later on, the holes won't be as obvious, but you will still notice just little spots uh, where the, the material that you put into the holes has a slightly different surface finish to this cast surface. All right, so that's, um, that's the, the good word on the precast flue gallery. One other thing uh, is it's made in the same way as these castings, exactly the same way. So with, with the same uh, stainless steel fibers in it. So when you're handling it, make sure you're wearing some gloves. And just be aware that you may find tiny little stainless steel fibers at the edges um, and just make sure you don't get one of those in your hand. We know the gap that we're aiming for. It was a relatively tight gap over the, the arch here. And if I put a massive amount of mortar on the top of these bricks, when we go to land it, 
well, it's going to tilt backwards because it's trying to squeeze that mortar out. So I'm actually going to aim for almost the, the, the perfect amount, but I'm going to create a, a raised section, like a V shape over the top. So it'll push the V down and squeeze the excess out the sides. If we have any gaps later on, we can always fill it in. We can always put more in, but it's quite challenging to get it out. Okay, so and again on the sides here, I'm gonna put in just a little bit more than the, uh, the amount allowed for by the spacer here, and it'll squeeze that out, but I don't wanna put on lots and lots more. This is just little tips, I've done it before. I've done it that way where I've put on way too much, and you end up really having to thump the flue gallery, you know, bashing it with your hand to try and get it to sit down and push that mortar out. guess that amount of mortar fairly well. Uh, I didn't put on too much extra. And so you see there's still uh, a gap here, but I can come along and just force some of the mortar into that joint and fill that up. Um, but it is significantly harder if it's sitting up really high to you know, belt it down and get it to squeeze the excess out. While we've got the mortar mixed up, we're gonna fill in this joint, uh, fill in any, any, little, any other little joints. We're gonna leave our plastic spaces in for now until this mortar takes its initial set and then we can pop them out and touch up the holes later. Once we remove the formwork and uh, we clean out all the joints, we're going to find little holes that we're going to want to fix up with a, a little batch of mortar. So uh, we can do it then, that's, that's no issue. Um, but now we'll fill this in and we'll also fill in the gap around the side here. In behind these bricks, we can trowel some mortar into there just bring it flush with the brickwork. This edge is nice and easy because we can just follow the line of our brickwork down. This edge back here, don't worry too much about this because your render is actually gonna be coming in up to this point anyway. So you don't really have to worry too much about what this bit looks like. Okay, so we're filling in this gap between the casting and the flue gallery. Uh, now it is a pretty serious gap. It's a good 40, 50 millimeters high. Uh, so it's a, it's a bit of material to put in. If you have been patient and you have waited long enough for your um, vent arch to set it so you can remove your formwork, then you can just reach in through the front and um, feel where we're pushing this material in from the back and it's coming in through, through the front so you can actually just smooth it off through the, the arch. Because we're building this on a bit of a schedule, uh, I'm gonna be reaching in through the flue uh, to smooth off the inside as I go. There is one risk with that, and that is we actually cut the sleeve and fold it into the flue gallery. So there are some sharp edges in there. So guys, please make sure you're wearing gloves. If you do decide to do it this way, um, make sure you, you don't cut your hands. this is quite a thick section of the mortar, we want to cover it with glad wrap just to stop it from dehydrating. With all of our other mortar joints, we're not really concerned because they're so thin, but this does have quite a big exposed face here. So we'll just put some of this glad wrap on just to protect it. 
If your vent arch bricks have been set for at least 12 hours, you can now remove your formwork. Uh, so it's nice and simple. All you have to do is pull out these plastic strips. Formwork will then drop down by about three millimeters and then we can just gently slide it out. If you do find that it gets stuck in there, you've taken the strips out and this thing just doesn't really want to move. Don't, don't try and bash it out or anything like that. Just undo the screws. It's just Phillips head screws holding it at the front. As soon as you remove those, you'll find you will, that part will just fall out and then you can just give the back a little tap and you'll be able to get the back out as well. Once you've removed the formwork, you're gonna find there's lots of excess mortar sort of bled through on the inside. You're also gonna find there's probably little voids, areas that haven't got any mortar in them at all. Uh, so this is the opportunity to get in there and do some cleaning and pointing. Uh, pointing those joints and filling up the holes with mortar. We can also remove our little spaces, our plastic spaces that were holding up our flue gallery, providing that's had long enough to set. Uh, and we can fill in those joints. Uh, so we'll mix up a little batch of the mortar and just work it into those joints, trowel off the excess, and then we'll sponge the whole thing down. 